Uh, this was a film done at, to, to accompany a paper presented in August of 1971 at the Artificial Intelligence Conference, um, and it uh, relates to this solution of the instant insanity puzzle. You might uh, wonder how a computer system can figure out a three-dimensional position of objects using a two-dimensional image from, that you get from a television camera. Um, basically, you calibrate this system so that uh, it knows where the tabletop is in relation to the camera, and then assuming that the objects in the field of view are resting on the table, you can compute their three-dimensional location. And once, once you have a three-dimensional location, you can pass that to the manipulator, which is also calibrated in that three-dimensional space, and then it could move its, its hand to any point in that space with any orientation. And this was all based on an absolute Cartesian coordinate system. Here's the work table holding the manipulator and the camera. Here you see the computer monitor and the camera video monitor. This is a six joint manipulator. The black and white camera interface to the computer so that intensity images can be stored in memory provided with a turret and color wheel controlled by the computer. Color was determined by reading the intensity of a point under different color filters. The camera was calibrated so three-dimensional points could be related to the coordinates of the camera image. Here is the solution to the instant insanity puzzle. You will see that on each side of the stack of four cubes, each color appears once and once only. Here is the start of the problem with the cubes placed at random in view of the camera. This is the camera video image. You will see a white band appear across the bottom of the screen indicating the part of the scene being read into the computer. Once an edge is found, a square region is read in. Here on the computer monitor, you will see the edge points for the first outline, which might be a cube. Straight lines are fitted to the edge points. An instance of the cube prototype is created with position and orientation such that its projection matches the lines representing the edges found in the scene. Here we see the ed edge points of the second cube. Lines are fitted and a second instance of the cube created. This When the next cube's image is read in, it is discovered that the cube is face onto the camera. The manipulator is immediately called to pick up the cube, turn it 45 degrees, and put it down again. This and the last cubes are located. With all four cubes found, a point is located in the center of each face. The intensity of each point is read in as the color wheel rotates through red, green, and blue filters. The colors of the faces are thus determined this information is stored with the cube instances. Here is the computer monitor showing the cubes with the color information added. The manipulator now turns over each cube so that the back faces are visible to the camera. Once the cube is turned over, it is again found by the camera and the instance re-established. When we see the cube on the computer monitor, you will see the colors are now on the appropriate back faces. Here we see the rest of the cubes turned over. Unfortunately, the manipulator cannot turn a cube over in one move as it cannot get its hand horizontal. So the cube is picked up and turned part way then picked up again and turned the remainder of the rotation. After a cube is put down, the manipulator is programmed to open and close its fingers to make sure that the cube has not fallen away but remains where it was placed. As each cube is turned over, it is again found by the camera. 
the entire scene is read in again through the color wheel filters and the colors for the now visible back faces are determined. This information is added to the instances of the cubes. With the colors of all faces of all four cubes determined, the puzzle is given to the solution program to solve. The stacking order and orientation of each cube is determined by a solution program written by Jerry Feldman. The first cube is simply moved to the base of the stack without being turned. The second cube requires turning over, again requiring it to be turned part way, put down and then picked up and turned into the final orientation. The cube is placed in the stack. The third cube is turned and stacked. The final cube is turned and stacked. Note the rather complicated backhand delivery to get the last cube into position at the top of the stack. Here you see my arm turning the stack of cubes to show that we had indeed solved the puzzle. On each side of the stack you will see that the colors of the cubes are all different and none is repeated.